This is Mon Health Talk, a weekly program focusing on the dedicated physicians, nurses, and staff at Mon Health, the region's premier community hospital system. People with skillful hands and bright minds using state of the art technology. We don't just practice medicine, we care for people like family. That's why at Mon Health you can feel the difference. Once again, welcome to this edition of Mon Health Talk. Good morning. Welcome into the program, Mon Health Talk. I'm Dave Wilson. Our guest this morning is Megan Loy, a family nurse practitioner, Mon Health Pulmonary Care. Megan, good morning. Good morning. I uh, appreciate you taking some time. Uh, this month is Lung Cancer Awareness Month, and that's the topic we're going to get into in just a moment. But first, as is tradition, I don't know when we started the tradition, but it's become tradition. Uh, You have to talk about you for at least a couple of minutes this morning, Megan. So uh, just give folks an idea about your background. Uh, Where do you you come from? Where did you go to school? And and how you ended up with Mon Health? So I'm actually from right here in Morgantown, and I received my undergraduate and my graduate degree from WVU, first in 2011, followed by my nurse practitioner degree in 2017. And I came to Mon um, just about two years ago, um, after being impressed by a lot of my coworkers that are, you know, now coworkers, of course, and talking to them about the environment, the mission statement, what it was like working at Mon General. And it was important to me to work somewhere that I could make a difference and an impact in my community. So I took a chance at the opportunity to do so. And I'm a a very proud Mon Health provider. What attracted you to nursing in the first place? I come from a very medical family. My mom's a nurse, and I was exposed to it at a very young age. It's kind of something that I was exposed to so early on that I kind of had a warped sense of reality. And initially, I wanted to go into journalism, but the more I thought about it, the more I was interested in caring for people and helping them become a better version of themselves so that I went to nursing school. I'll tell you, I, we hear that a lot too, when we talk to uh, folks, uh, nurses uh, and uh, practitioners and, and the physicians at Mon Health. There are, a lot, there, there are a lot of family connections somewhere along the line that helped uh, or that influenced the decision to get into the medical field there. Hear that a lot. Absolutely. Megan Loy is our guest this morning, family nurse practitioner at Mon Health Pulmonary Care. Where do you practice? Where are you located? I practice at Mon Health Pulmonary Care, which is in the medical park just before you enter up the hill going to Mon Health Medical Center. All right. I mentioned in the open, November is Lung Cancer Awareness Month, and this actually surprised me. Uh, lung cancer is the number one cause of cancer-related deaths in the U.S. I I don't know why that surprised me, but I, that was not what I would have guessed as the number one, Megan. It is. So a lot of people are actually asymptomatic to lung cancer, meaning they don't display any symptoms. And it really is different symptoms for different people. And that makes it very, very difficult to diagnose and treat because we often don't find it until it's at a very late stage and harder to treat. Are there different types of lung cancer? There are. So It's really divided into two main types of lung cancer, non-small cell lung cancer, which accounts for approximately 80 to 85% of lung cancers, and small cell lung cancer. Non-small cell lung cancer can actually be further differentiated into different subtypes like adenocarcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, large cell carcinoma, as well as a few other subtypes that are much less common. As a general rule, we group them together because The prognosis and treatments and outlooks are often similar. And while highly correlated and associated with smoking, it's important to note that cigarette smoking is not the only risk factor for developing lung cancer. And that was going to be actually my next question because we so closely relate uh, smoking with lung cancer, but it's not, doesn't always have to be the case then that um, you can actually be a non smoker and develop lung cancer? Absolutely, and that shocks a lot of individuals and a lot of folks that I talk to. Lung cancer can be been caused by a lot of risk factors other than smoking cigarettes, pipes, or cigars. You can get it from occupational exposures, radiation, asbestos exposure, secondhand smoke, air pollution, or even just a family history. Yeah, 
those those all factor in. And l- like you said, I would I would imagine a lot of people are surprised uh, when they get that diagnosis and they go, well, I've, I've never smoked a day in my life. Mm-hmm. Or maybe, you know, oh, I have the occasional cigar, or the occasional wh- whatever the case may be. Uh, I, I bet they're very surprised to get that diagnosis. They are. And it's actually shocking for us, too, because we're not immune to the typical thoughts on a disease process. Yes, it's very associated with cigarette smoking, but we still do have those folks that come in positive for lung cancer without ever having smoked a day in their lives. So what what is the screening process like for lung cancer and who should be screened on, a, on an annual or at least a regular basis? Lung cancer screenings are important because we know that early detection saves lives. Screening tests, are put in place so that we can find a cancer at a very early stage, sometimes even before symptoms appear. Oftentimes, lung cancer symptoms don't even appear until the later stages, and when abnormal tissue or cancer is found early, it's easier to treat and cure. Even when lung cancer does cause the symptoms, people may attribute it to other things like an infection or the long-term effects from smoking and that can further delay the diagnosis. According to the American Lung Association, we know that if a lung cancer is caught before it spreads, the likelihood of surviving five years or more improves to 60%, which is actually a 30% increase over the past 10 years, thanks in part to the screening new treatments and technology. We recommend folks that are at risk, which includes those who are aged 50 to 77 years, Um, not currently displaying signs and symptoms of lung cancer, have a tobacco history of at least 20 pack years, or are a current smoker or has quit smoking within the last 15 years to undergo a low-dose CT scan, which is the lung cancer screening. And what that is, is it works just like a regular CT scan, but at a very significantly lower radiation dose, which decreases the risk associated with the annual or more frequent examinations. Um, and it actually only has approximately one-fifth of the radiation of a regular CT scan because it's designed to evaluate nodules within the lungs. It's much less effective at evaluating bones or other organs, but for what we need it to do, it's highly effective. Hey, we're talking to uh, Megan Loy this morning, family nurse practitioner about health pulmonary care. Uh, certainly, uh, like we mentioned there with the risk factors, if uh, the patient is is or was a smoker, I think you mentioned 20 pack years, um, Mm -hmm. or had been around that, they they certainly have those risk factors. I I was just thinking about some of the other risk factors you mentioned, like um, uh, work environment, or if you had been around a a lot of secondhand smoke, whatever the case may be. Is that a discussion you will have with uh, your uh, primary care physician? Okay, here's, here's, here's where I worked all these years. Should I have uh, lung screenings? Is that that a discussion that will take place in, in that sort of a setting? Absolutely. If you feel that you might be at risk for developing lung cancer, I always recommend that folks start at their primary care provider. Just have that discussion. Say, you know, this is where I worked. I was exposed to a, a very large amount of secondhand smoke, or I myself was a smoker and I just quit five, ten years ago even, or you know, I'm a current smoker. Don't be ashamed of that because that's something we can work on. What's the bigger issue at hand is making sure that we scan you and we get you screened so that we can prevent cancer development at a later stage. Our guest this morning, Megan Loy, a family nurse practitioner, Mon Health Pulmonary Care. November is Lung Cancer Awareness Month. we got to squeeze in a quick break. We'll continue our conversation in a moment. You're listening to Mon Health Talk right here on WAJR. Now back to Mon Health Talk, a discussion of the issues, people, and procedures in healthcare today. If you have a question for one of our healthcare guests, call now at 304 296 0041. Megan Loy is our guest this morning. She's a family nurse practitioner with uh, Mon Health Pulmonary Care. November is Lung Cancer Awareness Month, and we are talking about uh, lung cancer risks and screenings, and uh, we'll bring Megan back into the conversation. So, Megan, uh, we've kind of touched on it, and this, I think, would go without saying, but the importance of the screening is obviously to identify something early, and as is the case with uh, most 
um, issues, if you identify it early, uh, you have more and better treatment options available to you, don't you? Absolutely, you do. So what what is the next step if if something comes up that is suspicious or something comes up in that screening that doctors want to take uh, a longer look at? What's the next step in the process for the patient? So at Mon General, we actually have a pretty unique program where um, primary care providers can actually refer to myself where I can have what's called a shared decision-making visit with a patient, identify their individual risk factors, and then I look at the CT scan. I review the results, and I can provide an immediate intervention by referring to our general pulmonology team for either surveillance of a nodule, because not all nodules are cancerous, um, or by facilitating a biopsy. We have a pretty unique platform at Mon Health called a Monarch, which can actually perform sub-millimeter movements and biopsy these nodules that can be in pretty difficult locations to provide accurate diagnosis. What are some ways we can mitigate mitigate our lung cancer risk? Of course, the number one thing I'm going to recommend is to stop smoking. Right. And if you need assistance with that, we're here to help. Um, don't be ashamed of it. We know that it's something that's almost cultural here in West Virginia. Um, if you know that you have risk factors from your occupation, talk to somebody about it. Um, talk to your primary care provider. If you know you have a family history, talk to us. Education is going to be key so that we can get you into our program. We can see you and hopefully help identify your individual risk factors and ways to mitigate that. You know, you mentioned this a couple of times, and it struck me, and I have, hadn't really given it any thought. How it must happen pretty often that as a patient, you just have to get over the doctor's not going to scold you or you're not going to scold the patient if they come in and say, yeah, I, 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 I've been a smoker for 20 years. I know it's bad for me. You're not you're not going to be lectured or, or anything like that. And I, I think we get that in our head, Megan, that we don't want to go in because we probably all know we shouldn't do it if, if we're smokers. I'm not mm-hmm. a smoker, but uh, <laughs> here I am. Don't judge me, <laughs> Megan. I'm not a smoker. But, <laughs> but, th- but that's my point that you're not going to be judged. It's it's about uh, either preventing or treating or mitigating risk factors. That's what you're concerned about. Uh, you're not really worried to uh, uh, present a lecture on something that probably folks know anyway. That's that's what I'm trying to say. Absolutely not. It's very non-judgmental. There's probably nothing you can tell me that's going to be shocking or surprising. I have folks come in and tell me, you know, they're embarrassed to admit at what age they started smoking. I've had them tell me that they started smoking at six because of family members or their older siblings. And, you know, I need to know that, not because I'm nosy, not because I'm going to scold (laughs) you, but because I know that puts you at a higher risk. I'm not going to judge you. Nobody here is going to judge you. We just need to know so that we can help you. And we certainly don't have time to get into all of it today, but the, the treatment options that are available when it comes to uh, treating lung cancer, the, they have made significant advancements, certainly, and probably are much further along than many people think they are um, mm-hmm. when they go in and they hear that diagnosis or they, they hear lung cancer. They're probably not aware of some of the advancements that have been made in the treatments that are available. They're not. I think they automatically assume that this is going to be a long, arduous fight where they're going to lose all their hair because of chemo. They're going to be sick. They're going to feel miserable. And I think that is actually one of the barriers to people reaching out and getting screened. And a lot of times that's just not the case. You know, we have a fantastic oncology team here at Mon Health that is here to help. You know, we always provide individualized care, but a lot of times you know, it's not as dark of a diagnosis as it was five, ten years mm-hmm. ago. Wow, even five, ten years ago. That's mm-hmm. how much, That's how. that should give you a pretty good indication of how much uh, advancement we've made if we're talking about, I was thinking more like 20 years ago, <laughs> Megan. You're, you're saying five, ten years ago we've made mm-hmm. that much uh, advancement. Wow. Yep. Constantly evolving and changing and making sure that patients maintain that high quality of life during treatment. 
Got to squeeze in our final break. We'll continue our conversation with family nurse practitioner Megan Loy. She's with Mon Health Pulmonary Care. November is Lung Cancer Awareness Month, and we'll be back in a moment on Mon Health Talk on WAJR. This is Mon Health Talk, providing a window into the Mon Health system and the dedicated health care providers who work there. If you'd like to comment or ask a question, please call 304-296-0041. Megan Loy is our guest this morning, family nurse practitioner on health pulmonary care, and November is Lung Cancer Awareness Month. Megan, I want to go over the um, requirements and who is eligible for those low-dose CT scans to detect lung cancer. Again, who, uh, who would be eligible for that type of a screening? So according to the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS, an individual is eligible for lung cancer screening if they are between the ages of 50 to 77 years old currently not displaying any signs or symptoms of lung cancer, have a tobacco history of at least 20 pack years of smoking, or are a current smoker or one who has quit within the last 15 years. It, can I ask, what are what is 20 pack years, by the way? What, what does that equal out to? So when we talk to an individual and get their smoking history, we put them in what's called pack year. So smoking one pack per day for one year equals one pack year. One pack is 20 cigarettes a day. Okay, so that can that obviously can vary uh, based on the individual then. Mm-hmm. Okay, I I did not know that. I, I always learned something. Well, of course I learned a few things this morning, Megan, but I always <laughs> learned something that I had no idea about uh, on this show each week. Okay, if a patient is interested in... Um, they meet these requirements. They meet these. Uh, they are eligible for a CT scan. They want to add that screening um, to their regiment. Mm-hmm. Uh, who do they do they make that appointment on their own? Where do they have that, or who do they have that conversation with? It's always a good idea to start with your primary care provider. Um, but if you are interested and you kind of want to learn more, you can always go to monhealth.com/lungcancer to request more information. Uh, monhealth.com slash lung cancer or uh, monhealth.com slash cancer. Uh, you can get more information. Megan, let me pose this. I, I don't know if you've got the information right in front of you. How how prevalent is lung cancer in West Virginia? Lung cancer is extremely prevalent in West Virginia. Um, I was actually just looking at the most current information we have. Um, we have one of the highest incidence rates in the United States, where it's reported to be about 83 people per every 100,000 individuals. Um, It's the most commonly diagnosed cancer among West Virginia residents, and accounts for 18% of the cancers diagnosed in the state each year. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that probably has a direct correlation to our uh, our higher, we we have a high smoking rate here in West Virginia as well. We do. It's an extremely high smoking rate, Um, and it's actually much higher in the southwestern region of the state, including the Lincoln, Boone, Logan, McDowell, Mingo counties. And actually, Lincoln County, which was surprising to me, has the highest rate. Um, And Doddridge County has the lowest rate of smoking. Lincoln County smokes about, it's about 118 people per 100,000. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. I had... Those numbers kind of surprised me as well. I, yeah. I learned something else today, Megan. <laughs> uh, Megan Loy, our guest this morning, family nurse practitioner of On Health Pulmonary Care. Again, November is Lung Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, if you would like to learn more about the low dose CT scanning, uh, see those. Uh, see if you are eligible for that uh, screening. You can go to monhealth.com slash lung cancer or monhealth.com slash cancer. Megan, thank you very much for the conversation. I appreciate the time. Thank you. Absolutely.